Good afternoon, everyone. This is Anya from the IGF Secretariat. It's the scheduled hour here at Geneva time, but I do suggest that we give uh, maybe two more minutes for other colleagues to join us and then we can officially start. In the meantime, you can test the chat function or if you wish to test your audio, you're also welcome to do so. Thank you. Now officially, good afternoon or good morning, good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, this is Anya Gengo from the IGF Secretariat, and uh, this is the second, I believe, outreach webinar on ways of engagement into IGF 2021 processes, and this time focused um, specifically on young people and opportunities you have, regardless where you're coming from or of your background or discipline. Um, and ways of engagement into the IGF processes, including as of this moment, because the number of activities are underway, but specifically also at the 16th annual IGF meeting, which will be hosted by the government of Poland in Katowice from 6th to 10th of December. Um, in the next, uh, I believe, around 90 minutes, we will be speaking about various activities to, as I said, engage into the um, Internet Governance Forum processes currently underway, and also we'll be speaking uh, about our journey toward the Katowice IGF. Uh, with me today, there are a number of colleagues uh, who are going to speak actively uh, on the agenda, and I can also see in the participants list a number of colleagues coming from various streams of the IGF, various partners, and we're very grateful to have you represented here. But uh, I know that my colleagues uh, will be taking the floor shortly after me. They will be 
presenting themselves, but I wish to say that um, especially this webinar has been prepared uh, in addition to our team uh, of the IGF Secretariat. We're also uh, working very closely and uh, cooperating with our host country, the government of Poland, and I'm glad that my colleague Anna is here. And so Anna will be also taking the floor shortly and she's going to uh, introduce herself and just refer quickly to her team. In addition to Anna, we are working very closely with uh, an academic institution, the NASC, which has a wonderful team of colleagues and they're very much uh, involved in planning and designing the youth focused activities uh, at the IGF 2021. So you will be hearing from colleagues after me as well. And the Youth Polish IGF are very active. IGF Youth Initiatives, so which is involved in planning the youth activities, including the Youth Summit for, uh, for several months now. I could even say years, because we, as you know, last year started working with the Polish government when we thought that the Polish government would host the last year's IGF, but that due to the COVID-19 pandemic did not happen. I'm very happy that uh, this year it's happening. Um, a number of other colleagues coming from the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance, Youth Observatory, and, uh, and others, which will take the floor also shortly after me, because I'm sure I've missed to mention someone. But then uh, maybe if you agree, let's uh, quickly start with uh, what really is the focus of, the, of this webinar. And uh, this is really an, an idea for this uh, dialogue is to have a conversation and exchange of views. So we do count on your questions and suggestions to make the IGF 2021 even better and to fit the needs of all stakeholders coming from all stakeholder groups and all regions. So allow me just to say where, where are we now and uh, what are we preparing for? So some of you will probably know that the IGF 2021 is really an interactive process that's been underway technically since last year, since we ended the IGF 2020 and the 15th annual IGF meeting that was uh, exceptionally hosted fully online. So the process features uh, a very vibrant inter in, uh, in, uh, intersectional work uh, stream activities, preparatory and engagement phase, and um, all that in a lead up to the 16th annual IGF meeting, which will be hosted by the government of Poland in Katowice from 6th to 10th of December. The 16th annual IGF meeting will be a meeting point for all of us. Uh, we are very much aware as the, all, the, the entire organizing team, so the, the United Nations, the Polish government, uh, and all the stakeholders we cooperate with, that the COVID-19 pandemic continues to pose restrictions on, on travel and that perhaps a number of stakeholders will not be able to join us in person. But that also makes us aware and we're working very hard toward ensuring that regardless if you're not going to be able to physically be in Katowice, that you will be able to meaningfully participate and that the differences will be really minimal between those participating from the IGF venue in Katowice compared to those participating um, from any part of the world uh, through means of digital technologies. You will be participating in a program that is composed of over 200 different sessions. This year, the IGF is streaming to have a very focused issue-driven approach to its programming. Uh, and the multi-stakeholder advisory group has been working really hard with the community as well to ensure that this program is um, developed in a, in a bottom-up manner to reflect this need. So that all resulted in, as I said, over 200 sessions focused on six issue areas. They are very diversified in terms of their uh, focus, but then again, uh, they're, they're all, as I said, issue-driven, and we do expect concrete discussions on concrete issues with concrete outputs. So uh, regardless what's your preference in terms of internet governance topics, I'm sure you will find something that fits your um, in interests from those sessions which are focused on issue area related to economic and social inclusion and human rights, to those focused on universal access and meaningful connectivity, emerging regulations, environment, 
um, digital cooperation and trust, security and stability. All these issue areas uh, do have their associated narratives and policy questions, just to bring it closer to you, what the focus of the discussion will be about. And if you visit the IGF website, then you can learn more about these narratives. I, uh, I did mention at the very beginning that we have the preparatory phase. The preparatory phase technically features a number of sessions organized by different groups. They sometimes are organized by the intersessional work streams to what I will come very uh, shortly to, but sometimes also by the community members. And for example, this webinar is part of the preparatory phase with the idea to foster stakeholder engagement with uh, especially young people. Um, and uh, in addition to the preparatory phase, as I said, the 16th annual IGF meeting in Katowice, which is just a very few weeks away from today, will be um, rich in its structure. Uh, and as I said, in substantive issue driven focus. When it comes about the structure, we do have really different types of sessions, which are hosted um, every day, starting from day zero on the 6th of December. They are different in terms of the focus, we're trying to ensure that we don't have thematic overlaps in par parallel hosted sessions. But in addition to those uh, different sessions, such as workshops, open forums, which are hosted by government and IGOs, we have the town halls, lunches and awards, lightning talks, networking sessions, sessions organized by the dynamic coalitions and national and regional and youth IGFs, uh, and uh, main sessions, high level sessions, uh, sessions organized um, for and with uh, members of different parliaments, but open to everyone to participate, uh, as well as the sessions which are part of the youth and newcomers track. And this is of your interest, and we will be focusing very much on these, on the youth sessions uh, in the next couple of minutes. All these sessions that I mentioned really are, as I said, open to everyone, and they provide good opportunities for young people to engage with uh, different stakeholders, specific stakeholder groups, specific disciplines, specific level. Um, and the high level leaders track refers to uh, high level decision makers, uh, decision shapers, experts, which, uh, uh, which are well known to all of us. And uh, the IGF as a, as a forum which gathers various stakeholders from various stakeholder groups and regions will provide opportunity to network with those people who are already making the concrete changes in their cities, countries, regions, and with that global changes. The same goes with the sessions which are organized for and with uh, legislators, so members of different parliaments. We work there uh, with in close cooperation with the Interparliamentary Union as well as the Polish Parliament. And uh, you, will, um, you will see in these sessions that it's a great opportunity really to ask those who create laws and with that create uh, concrete decisions happening in certain countries and you know, shaping behavior of citizens to, to speak to them and to, get, to engage with them, to point at where you think there needs to be a change uh, in policy ecosystem and to advise what that change could be. I. Uh, I did mention, so I'm not going to go back into these, but I want to mention very quickly uh, the intersessional work. The intersessional work is uh, basically the work that's happening in between the two annual IGF meetings. It's extremely important to us, but I think to the global community as well, given the level of engagement traditionally and historically in its various forms. In 2021, the forms of the intersessional work are different and are very interesting. We have the best practice forums, which are basically multi-stakeholder networks of, of uh, experts focused on uh, existing and emerging good practices, as the name itself say. And uh, this year, there are two BPFs, one focused on cybersecurity and another one focused on gender and digital rights. They have been working very hard uh, since the beginning of the year to understand what are those best practices uh, across the communities. And uh, they're close to finalize their final reports. But you are not late to engage with these experts. I think this is actually a very good momentum because you are now entering the phase where the work that's been done so far is going into a consultative period. So you can ask questions and suggest changes for the final output document 
and the final sessions that all these um, both BPFs will have at the um, IGF in Katowice. In addition to BPFs, we have the policy networks, which are multi-stakeholder driven efforts that provide in-depth expert views on broad internet governance topics. They all have their uh, multi-stakeholder working groups of experts, and they're focused on environment and on meaningful access. Likewise, as for the BPFs, you are most welcome to join the policy networks. They host their meetings uh, once or twice a month. They have vibrant mailing lists and uh, you can uh, participate in those meetings or write to the mailing list to engage with experts and uh, contribute to shaping the output documents. But it's also a very good opportunity to, I think, bring um, expertise and knowledge to your own communities if you see maybe a gap uh, on these particular internet governance areas existing in your local communities. And finally, 22 dynamic coalitions, very similar to the best practice forums and policy networks in terms of the setup. They are multi-stakeholder networks of uh, experts coming from all parts of the world, working throughout the year on ish various issues, various internet governance issues. If you visit the IGF website, you will see that there are really different focuses of the DCs. Some of the dynamic coalitions are in existence basically as long as the IGF is, so uh, for, for several years. And they are focusing you know, on, on issues such as access, blockchain, um, Internet of Things, DNS, gender, and so on. So I do invite you to explore the IGF website and to and to uh, subscribe to the mailing lists of all these intersessional work streams and, um, and connect with, uh, with peers and experts. I did mention at the beginning, going back to the Katowice IGF, that the IGF in Katowice will be hosted in a hybrid format, which means that we are creating as equal as possible conditions for those participating from the IGF venue in Katowice, as well as those participating online. In practice, this means a couple of things. Uh, for the purpose of this webinar, I will say in this introduction, and I'm sure you will have follow-up questions, is that the, uh, the venue in Katowice will not be exclusive to those being in Katowice. We are trying to create a 3D uh, counterpart of the venue. So basically a 3D version that's going to mirror the physical venue so that the online participants also can enter the venue, can enter the meeting room, and connect to the meeting. Uh, the unique participating platform will be is being developed actually for the meeting, which means that all participants, regardless of their location, will be participating through a unique platform. The request for floor and um, the way you're delivering your remarks will be done again through a unique uh, digital platform, regardless of the physical placing of a person and that should also help us to ensure that we have equal conditions for all. The famous IGF village, some of you will know, uh, exhibition space basically of different organizations on internet governance work, will also have its um, digital kind of mirroring counterpart as well, as so that if you're not in Katowice and you cannot walk the IGF village physically, then you can walk through it uh, virtually and also schedule your meetings with the exhibitors, um, browse through their materials and basically see everything that a person present in Katowice can see at the IGF village. The concept of remote hubs uh, is this always, has always been important to the IGF and I think this year has a particular value because of the uh, importance of uh, online participation. So you are most welcome as well to approach the IGF Secretariat if you would like to learn more about the concept of remote hub and maybe get advice on how to set up a remote hub in your community, be it at your university, in your office, or, or in any space that is available to you. It's a, it's a very good way to remedy the lack of um, networking face-to-face -face at the IGF uh, venue if you're not able to travel to Katowice and to network and uh, follow, participate in the IGF meeting in an organized way uh, together with your colleagues and other peers from your community. So with that, I think uh, I've covered most of the points about the IGF um, 2021. And uh, I do invite you to note your questions. You can post in the chat or shortly take the floor. But now I would like to give the floor to my colleague Anna from the Polish government to continue 
guiding us to what, what is there in Katowice where we're all preparing for. Thank you very much, uh, Anja. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, Anja, you said uh, a lot about the uh, about the venue. I prepared a couple of uh, photos just to show you that uh, that the venue is huge, uh, very comfortable, uh, located uh, in the city center of the uh, of the Katowice, so it can be reachable very easily by uh, airplane, train, bus, car. Uh, whatever would be mo most uh, more convenient uh, to you. Uh, Anja, you mentioned about also about the high-level uh, high trucks and the parliamentary trucks, so you described it uh, very well. Uh, we will uh, have seven of them, and uh, that would be also a great opportunity uh, for you to uh, get involved uh, and ask the questions. Uh, we will have also, and I'm sure Marta will speak about it later, the uh, special 30 minutes of the high level, high level uh, participants uh, at the YAF uh, Lupa GF Summit. Uh, so there will be also a possibility to, to get involved. So please uh, ask the question if you have any ideas also for, the, uh, for, for, for your participation, please also let us know. Uh, I would like to just say a couple of words uh, from the host country, what you can also expect uh, being on site uh, in, uh, in Katowice, but also there will be some uh, activities uh, available, uh, extra activities uh, available online. And uh, uh, first of all, uh, we will have, uh, as you, most of you know, uh, hopefully, uh, we have this um, con uh, con uh, Competition, uh, which is uh, which was dedicated uh, to the young people, my internet of the future. Uh, it has been ended a couple of days ago. We received over 600 works. So uh, now uh, our committee uh, is uh, uh, is checking uh, for the winners. Uh, the winners are on the, uh, you will know are on the 27th of uh, October. Uh, but uh, those extras, uh, which you can also be part of, uh, involve uh, con uh, concert at, uh, con uh, at uh, NOSP Hall. This is the uh, beautiful music hall, the, one of the most modern uh, in, uh, in the whole Europe, actually. So, uh, and the concert, if you cannot come to Katowice uh, on site, uh, it will be streamed online. Uh, there will be also a music night on Wednesday, so everyone who plays the instrument can take part uh, in the music night. Uh, there will be a short performance with the TEDx talk uh, done by uh, Ingolf uh, Wunder, uh, Austrian uh, pianist. Uh, so, uh, so it will be also, uh, I believe, uh, he will prepare a proper and beautiful show for everyone. Uh, we will also share the dedicated scientific publication uh, on uh, future of the law of internet and new technologies. You will receive it uh, in uh, in the uh, book format, but it can also be uh, it can be also downloaded uh, online later on. Uh, you will be able to uh, taste the uh, regional uh, specialities, uh, especially uh, at the uh, at the venue. Uh, there will be free tours uh, for Katowice and surroundings. Uh, there will be uh, one of the two will uh, will be directed to uh, Wieliczka uh, Mining. This is one of the beautiful places put on the UNESCO list, so it would be really worth uh, going there. And of course, it will be all uh, free of charge. Uh, Silesian Museum, which is just walking distance from uh, from the Katowice. Uh, from uh, from the venue has offered the tickets for a single Polish walk it's just less than 20 euro cents so uh, everyone is uh, welcome to see the beautiful exhibition of uh, of Silesian uh, Museum and uh, the last but not least uh, we will provide the free transport in Katowice city for, for all uh, IG uh, participants so there is a lot of things uh, to be uh, seen on site and participate on site but of course on site but of course if you cannot 
uh, come on site, uh, uh, most of these uh, extras also will be provided to you online, so you can also uh, you can also take part in, part in it. Uh, the next slide is about the competition. I just uh, I already mentioned uh, the competition was of, on poster, video, and essay for uh, the uh, my internet. Uh, on the 27th of August, we will uh, have the winners. Uh, and I think the, the uh, 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 from my side that would be all actually. And now I'm passing the floor to uh, to Marta, who will speak uh, about uh, the YAP uh, ideas for the YAP IG. Thank you, Anna. Guys, can you please confirm if you hear me well? We can hear you, yes. Great. So, hello, everyone. My name is Marta, and I'm, the, I'm a part of the U5GF Poland Steering Committee. Today, I will tell you a little bit about what we have done, what we are doing now, and what we are planning for uh, Youth Summit. And I'm super uh, happy that we see or hear or or at least I, I see your names, uh, each other once again. Some of you I already know, some of you know, and I'm super happy to welcome uh, also new faces. Uh, so from the, let's just start from the very beginning. Um, actually, not maybe very beginning, but the beginning of preparations to, to Youth, uh, Youth Summit 2021. Um, first, we, we started, uh, we started from three webinars which were open to everyone and were covering the most important uh, no uh, the previous one please hello oh yeah thank you um so it was called road to IGA. it was a cycle of three webinars in april may and june which were covering the most important uh, issues on internet governance the first one was about digital sustainability with guests for for example european commission the PWC, some youth organizations. Uh, the second one were, were organized uh, with our friends from uh, Council of Dialogue and it was about artificial intelligence and had many participants as well. And the last one, just before holidays, was about digital inclusion and digital skills, which we organized with uh, Zamenhof Institute, which was uh, the Institute uh, of Journalists and with cooperation also with some other journalists, uh, international ones. Guardian and some other people who are doing really amazing projects uh, regarding digital uh, inclusion. Um, and as we started from that, we gained somehow uh, the audience, or, and uh, of, of course it was all open. And then we invited through our social media and on our open meetings uh, some people to, uh, I mean, I mean all, all people to, to apply for our project, which is something separate from Youth Summit itself, but we called it Project Youth Summit because we want we wanted to select, uh, next slide please, if it's possible. <laughs> we wanted to prepare meaningfully and truly for what we are going to talk about during Youth Summit. So we asked participants to write something about their ideas on internet governance and about nine uh, topics, uh, for example, as I said, digital sustainability, data protection, uh, digital inclusion, digital skills, digital education, cybersecurity, etc. Um, so I will ask participants, applicants to, to choose, for example, one or two and to describe their interests. And we, uh, with our friends from uh, Youth Coalition on Internet Governance or Youth Observatory and many other uh, youth uh, organizations uh, around internet governance, we jointly uh, chosen uh, the best applicant, and we right now have uh, around, I don't remember exactly, but 80 participants who are, uh, who are dedicated to, some, to, to these nine groups. Each group has a coordinator, uh, and, uh, and also, which is very important, we also have mentors uh, uh, who want to help and support those young people in drafting points of action. What are the points of action? Points of action are, as you can see, uh, the points or statements which are supposed to answer these three very important questions regarding uh, 
youth in digital policy making. So first of all, what are the challenges right now? How could they be solved? And who could help in solving them? Because uh, we as young people, we are just starting and we don't have the exact tools ourselves to do some stuff. We can, we can just, for example, find solutions and try to, uh, to push them to, uh, in policy making and, uh, and uh, stuff like this. So uh, this is what we are doing. And we already started uh, our, um, our work with those applicants with many super uh, high level uh, mentors, also from ICANN or from European Commission, as I mentioned before, uh, with some uh, professors, PhD candidates, many people wanted to support us, which is great. Um, but of course, the project is, as I said, something separate. And uh, we want uh, later to show our uh, points of action on the exact youth summit. Uh, oh, sound problem. Is there something wrong with my, my voice? No, no, we can hear you okay. very well, Matt. Uh, show me the next slide. Mm. Thank you. So, uh, regarding your summit itself, uh, it will be in the first week of December, uh, and there will be your summit's working session, and we will do roundtable discussion in thematic groups, probably maybe similar to those ones that I that I already uh, described, and uh, we we will of course. Uh, deliver some of our ideas or points of actions uh, which, uh, the, which the groups uh, work on. But of course, Youth Summit is very open and super open even to everyone. So if, for example, someone will come and say, I don't like this point of action, I have another idea, we can discuss it and we can make the points of action in a one document, like a charter or something, as a result of Youth Summit itself. Uh, and uh, the day zero, uh, is it about me? I'm sorry, I'm in, at the same time, I'm reading what, uh, uh, what you were saying, maybe I'll just stop on, on finishing my, my presentation. So the day zero of the IGF is, as you can see uh, on the presentation, uh, it will be presenting successful initiatives also with our friends from different initiatives all over the world. Um, and during our uh, summit, there will be a lot of high-level speakers, high-level guests uh, from United Nations, from our um, from our uh, Prime Minister uh, Chancellor, probably, and maybe also some guests from the European Union institutions. But it's also to to be uh, to be said to be uh, later um, maybe announced because you know, maybe let's make like a mystery around this a little bit right now as there is no um, super exact um, resolutions about it. Um, so, yeah, can you please uh, give me another slide? Thank you, the, the last one. Um, yeah, and now I would like to pass the floor uh, to Pedro, my friend, uh, with whom we are doing the project and uh, he'll tell you something more about Thanks, Marta. Thanks, Anna. Thanks, Sanya. Um, the idea here is to, the idea of this competition is to involve young people who are getting to know the internet governance ecosystem and other important projects that are also pillars of the cyberspace as we know it today. It meaning that besides the internet governance forums and the regional ones, the national ones, there are, there are also other initiatives that young people should participate to be a part of building the internet as we expect it to be in the future. So Wikidata is one of the many projects maintained by the Wikimedia Foundation that tends to be uh, to open data what Wikipedia was to is today, uh, to open knowledge in general. So it has another very important function, which is to integrate other Wiki projects and the participation of new agents in uh, this uh, Wikidata project is very important so that people in the future can have the same facilities that we had with Wikipedia during our education, during our formation, something that is very accessible, uh, very collaborative in the way that knowledge is built 
by uh, a lot of people in the internet together. So we chose uh, Wikidata because it has less language barriers. Uh, people can edit it uh, without so much difficult as it would be to work with Wikipedia. That's a little bit a little bit more visible, but people that speak natively English would have some advantage uh, among others who are non-natives. Uh, it has this importance of it's some a project that people from that work with Wikipedia projects have a really good expectation of what that will achieve in the future. And the community there is much more friendly, which means that edits that we make in this project will be probably maintained during a long period. Um, the target audience here is the Youth Summit participants and general youth interested in Wikipedia projects that will also get to know the Youth Summit through this contest. We have, uh, uh, 430 euros in prizes, uh, 100 euros for the first place, 70 euros for the second place, 40 euros for third place, 20 euros for fourth place, and then 10 euros or five euros as prizes for participations until uh, the person who gets in the 20th, 20th place in this contest. So uh, the idea here is to engage uh, young people in this ecosystem, the general health governance ecosystem, uh, promoting the youth summit among other communities that are not already involved in uh, internet governance forums, uh, procedure, procedures and uh, meetings that are happening as a way to plan this great thing that we have every year. And, oh, sorry, it looks like, <laughs> yeah, it's the whole, a found letter there. <laughs> but it's euros, <laughs> and um, and the other idea is to create these bridges among weak communities and the IGF because there are a lot of people who are in one space and are not in the other, and it's two spaces that would benefit a lot with more dialogue among them. So I believe that's it, and I would give the floor back to the next person if there is. I think maybe Marta, she, uh, she could say something about provisional uh, UFIGF uh, summit agenda. Uh, if not, I can cover. Uh, sorry, Anna, can you, can you repeat because I... You cannot hear me, I'm sorry. Is it better now? Yes, yes, yes. This, I'm so sorry, this... Uh, First time happens. I guess. Uh, uh, no, no, I was just saying that maybe Marta, you can cover uh, and explain a little bit about the uh, uh, youth uh, IGF summit uh, at the I IGF I... uh, provisional agenda. Yes, of course, but I guess I already uh, somehow covered shortly uh, this agenda. As I said uh, before, as there will be openings, which is the best of honor, and I said already. Someone from the United Nations, of course, someone from our uh, Prime Minister, uh, Chancellor, from, from our government, uh, and uh, probably someone from the European institutions. Uh, but uh, maybe I will not give you any names right now because it would be like a small mystery, and we are still don't are not super sure about it. So let's we'll just make it like this. But you you can be uh, you can be sure that it will be uh, something very special. Uh, of course. Q and A session. Uh, as you want to cover your 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 questions, uh, and then um, something uh, would be already what I already said also, like to um, as we wanted to deliver to the summit uh, the, some ideas on um, on point of action, and then we want to show them to the um, to to others, and then to draft maybe all together. Uh, these points of action in some, some one document. Uh, the name right here is the uh, Katowice Protocol, but of course we can also think uh, uh, about another name. It depends on all depends on us all. Uh, and then uh, the, the ceremony of the Wiki contest, which was a few weeks ago, 
covered and short uh, wrap up closing uh, like thank you to everyone that kind of thing uh, in the end so i guess this is it and of course um, we uh, we are looking forward to hearing from you any ideas uh, any kind of thing that you want to share with us and please uh, can you please come back again to the previous slide no, no, this one. And these are our uh, our social media, and we would we'd be very thankful if you would uh, subscribe or uh, follow us or like our websites uh, because we post there many uh, informations. And before you summit, we will also uh, have some meaningful content there about uh, these nine topics that we, we cover. So that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, Anna, Marta, Pedro, and everyone who spoke. And I think now, after all these um, uh, introductory remarks, it would be a good time to give the floor to all participants to ask questions, suggest any ideas on how can we improve the youth engagement processes uh, in IGF 2021. But I would like to add, while you're preparing to take the floor, post your comments in the chat or just raise your hand in the in the participants list is the fact that um, we will ensure that you will have opportunity to also participate in all other sessions, regardless if they're explicitly youth focused or not. And that's something that we aim for to ensure that young people can uh, participate as equals in all sessions. So uh, you will see that interactive schedule will actually play a very important role here because it will allow you to liaise uh, more directly with all the session organizers. It will also allow you to ask questions beforehand if, for example, you will face a time zone challenge. For instance, a session can be hosted in the middle of the night, so in very inconvenient hours for you. And so all those features will be available on the IGF website and we hope to have them implemented in the next uh, couple of days. So with that, uh, I'm giving forward to you if you have any questions or suggestions. So as I said, you can post the question in the chat or you can raise your hand in the participants list and we will call your name to speak. Some of the colleagues did send me private messages in the chat and I think I'm seeing a commonality among all, which is uh, what would be the way to contact uh, all of us. So we did share the contact emails uh, on the slide and this presentation will be made available on the, on the IGF website and the host countries website. I'm sure the Polish Youth IGF will make it available as well. And uh, the IGF at un.org is the generic address of the IGF secretariat. You can also write to that address and we'll make sure that the request um, goes to the right address. So no, I don't see any questions, no requests for the floor. And that's, that's oh, actually, yes, I do see, I think, one question, but it's uh, actually curious to know what the accommodation for, is it language, language or luggage? I'm not sure how to, Language, sorry. So um, there are many people joining from other parts of the world. Just curious to know, um, for because it's hybrid, right? What the hybrid, preparations yes. are? Yeah. So interpretation, um, are there captions? Or the preparation for that. No, thank you very much, Lily. That's a very good question. And uh, yes, you are right. Um, you no, know, that's a very important point. So the high level sessions and the main session will have interpretation to six UN languages. That includes, of course, the opening and closing ceremony, the parliamentary track sessions. Uh, the um, all sessions hosted during the regular days will have live transcriptions and transcripts made available shortly after the session and on the IGF website. Those will be webcasted as well and the recordings will be posted on the YouTube. Uh, so that's, uh, I think that's, that covers the the very good question you asked. Um, as I said, we will make it possible for you to ask questions related to certain sessions even beforehand. So even if you ask those questions in your local language, we'll find a way to uh, for sure respond. Um, but um, those are for now the, 
uh, the, the, the features that we have for, for the CSI GIF. Thank you, Aziz, Elise. Uh, uh, understood the response. Um, any other questions or, or ideas or suggestions for your participation at the IGF 2021, concretely maybe for the Youth Summit, the competition that Anna mentioned, or just your travel to Katowice? I know that a number of you did ask about visas, and I just want to maybe preempt there those questions and say that um, it, it, it is indeed a very important question. We do advise you as soon as possible to register, to wait for the approval of your registration, and then to visit the nearest uh, consular office in, uh, of uh, wherever you are located, present your approval of the registration as it serves as an official invitation letter, and hopefully uh, successfully facilitate your visa process. If issues will arise there, there is a dedicated liaison officer for visas, which the Polish government uh, kindly delegated to all of us. So please do visit the IGF's uh, host country website. Uh, the information is uh, there and uh, I think very useful in case you face these challenges. Uh, I see that um, uh, Matora is asking, is it a fully funded and are you going to assist with visa applications? So uh, ju just as I said, our assistance, yes, it's very direct. Thanks to the government of Poland, there is a dedicated office for, for visas and uh, they're assisting, but maybe I should not be speaking on this. Anna is here. So I just give the floor to Anna if there's anything to add. Yes, we have a special uh, assistant, the special uh, officer. Uh, he's, uh, uh, he's actually her. <laughs> and um, address can be found at the uh, IGF2021.pl uh, uh, website. And uh, just go to the, uh, to the embassy and consulate with the invitation from, you got from, after registration from the, uh, from the UN. And it should be uh, it should be sufficient actually for the founding. Unfortunately, and I'm really sorry, we don't, do not uh, provide um, any founding. Uh, so if there are any costs of visas uh, applied, uh, unfortunately, you have to uh, bear it by yourself. I will just check for this. Oh, I see, uh, Anna, there is another question. Uh, does Poland allow to visit Poland via Schengen visa that is not Poland issued or because of COVID you need only Poland issued visa? I would have to check actually with, the, uh, with these visa officers and I, maybe I can get back to you uh, uh, on that issue. Mm. Uh, yeah, indeed. Maybe Anna, you can. Yes, but I think it should, be, it should be not a problem since we yes. get the people coming on Schengen visa to Poland is in Schengen, so it, the visa has not to be uh, uh, to, to be issued uh, in Poland. The point is maybe there may be a point that if you travel with a stopover in another country, so uh, so there may be issue at the airport in another country, but. Uh, but in Poland, I believe uh, there should be no problem. Indeed. And then, uh, well, thank you. And Alina, as I said, there is a visa liaison officer. You can find the email on the IGF uh, host country website. So the best would be really to check on, on your situation because it can be very unique to the participant with the visa liaison officer and uh, ensure that you're covered um, all your procedures. And then, uh, Maxwell is asking, how long does it take to get the badge from the UN website? You mean, how long does it take to have your registration appro approved? So it, it really depends on the, uh, on, the, on, the, on the request, but we are, yes, we, we are aiming to do within maybe the maximum of three days. If there are issues, please do write at IGF.org and we will ensure to look at the approval specifically. Uh, any other questions while I plug in my laptop? Apologies.
thank you. And then could you share? Ah, yes, I see Anna has shared the. So that's the page where you can find the contact of the IGF visa liaison officer to respond to the question of Vladislav in the chat. Any other questions from colleagues? So just a quick note that the new IGF website, as you know, is live. The interactive schedule should be up soon. And I think that should help us all to create our own personal schedules from more than 200 different sessions. Uh, there is one hand raised by Enoch, and please, you have the floor. OK, thank you very much. Um, very quick, I want to find out uh, for those of us who may have to find ourselves uh, can we get any reliable information on the average cost to stay in Poland for the six days for the event? If you are going to find yourself beyond your travel cost, any estimate on how much it will cost you to stay and attend the sessions for the six days? Thank you. So uh, for, for the accommodation, there is also a web page uh, and we have uh, accommodation operator. So you can go through and check the uh, prices, but starting from very cheap ones, when the place in the hostel can cost like 20 euros a night with a breakfast, there are also the, 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 uh, the most, uh, most expensive. So for 50, 100 euros uh, a night, it's it's really really good hotel in Katowice so uh, with, with, uh, with the breakfast but these don't worry because the, the, uh, this I actually I forgotten to mention catering also uh, is uh, is free of charge at the premises so it will be served uh, uh, for three or four hours I believe and I think three hours during the and there will be a coffee stand so everyone can grab a coffee so uh, so uh, for, for this for this point the, the, the the food will be uh, provided free of charge and then the transport will be free of charge uh, i don't know for example uh, a bread costs uh, one euros one euros 50 so we are not very expensive countries uh, to uh, to come and to uh, a, a ticket to the museum different than silesian museum it's around two euros uh, i don't know fuel costs uh, one euro fifty cents, more or less, at the, uh, at the moment. So, uh, so with thinking about costs uh, in for Europe, it's a uh, it's a middle 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 cost country. Uh, we are preparing the uh, special booklet uh, with the info the exact information, more or less, how much so, uh, w uh, so, so it can cost. Uh, I think it will be ready within the next two or three weeks, and we will also post it on the uh, on the web page. But if you, in the meantime, if you have uh, any other this kind of uh, questions, I'm just uh, sending uh, you uh, our general email for the IGF team. So we are happy also to uh, to answer any extra questions. Thank you, Anna. And thank you for the good questions. Uh, just on the question in the chat about the registration, if you have to be associated with an organization, you can even, you know, there are a number of uh, stakeholders who are registering who are independent consultants and so on. So they don't really associate themselves with any organization. So you can indicate that. If you're a student, our advice is to indicate the university. And uh, yes, Anna posted the email address in the chat that you can direct your generic questions there. Any other questions from your side or comments? I don't see any uh, questions in the chat. I don't see any requests for, for the floor. So um, if, if that's so, then uh, please rest assured we will try to collect all your questions to add to our FAQs on the logistics. The email addresses are shared in the chat. Be free to write to us. And maybe just in closing, I would give the last word to, uh, well, to any of the colleagues that were speaking, starting from Anna. And uh, I think we can easily wrap this meeting. Thank you very much. From my side, uh, we are all welcome here in, uh, in Katowice, if not on site. And 
I'm sure we will have a very fruitful discussion and uh, interesting meetings. Thanks. Indeed. Pedro, Marta, would you like to give a final words? No, I would just like to thank everyone for uh, the webinar and thank you all for the amazing job we are doing organizing this whole thing. Exactly. Thank you so much for that. And uh, we hope that you will uh, jo join us in, in the next. Thank you very much. Thank you very much from my side as well. Also on behalf of the Secretariat and my colleagues, I wish to thank you everyone, uh, especially colleagues who helped to prepare this webinar, all of you that really dedicated your time to be with us. Uh, continue asking us questions. Uh, challenging our creativity is very useful for us because that's how we make the IGF better. Uh, so you have the email addresses to write to us and uh, we, there will be a number of opportunities to engage uh, and to speak before we meet in Katowice online or physically. But uh, in the meantime, email, email exchanges are always useful. With that, thank you very much. The recording of this webinar, as well as the presentation, will be posted, as I said, on multiple locations, starting from the IGF website, IGF host country website, Polish Youth IGF colleagues. So I'm sure you will be able to, to find it, and we're always happy to email you quickly and uh, confirm the presentations with you. Thank you, everyone, and have a nice Thanks, rest everyone. of the day and evening. Bye. Bye-bye.